Hey guys and welcome to another video here on our channel The Guide. I'm Benjamin, also known as Taz, and in this video we are going to talk about FIFA 21. I already had the opportunity to play a beta version of FIFA 21 and in this video I want to share my first thoughts and impressions on the gameplay of FIFA 21. There's already a Pitch Notes article live by EA which covers everything what is new in terms of gameplay, so the new features, how do they look like, what they want to achieve with it and what are the controls and I'm going to add some information to that because I will share my impressions. What do I think about the new features, how do they play like, are they relevant? are they promising and so on. So I would recommend to check out the Pitch Notes article to get all the information, all the bases about the new features and I will give you some additional information to that. And before we start I want to quickly thanks to EA and also the Game Changer Network for giving us the opportunity to already play FIFA 21 and making this video possible. The first topic that we want to talk about is positioning, especially in attack, because I think this is one of the biggest issues that we have in FIFA 20, that you can't rely and trust on your teammates. They go for unnecessary runs into offside positions, they are in offside positions quite often, they hide behind defenders and in general their positioning is not very smart and this slows down your attack and makes your attack very stale because you always have to wait for your teammates to get in a proper position. Now in FIFA 21 they reworked the positioning and overall my first impression is that I regained some trust into my teammates that they don't go into the offside positions, that I don't have to wait for them because they behave a little bit smarter, usually I can play a quicker, faster pass to them because they don't make some unnecessary runs. So overall the first impression was much better. And also to my knowledge this is very dependent on the player's attributes, so for example an attacker with a high positioning attribute is going to behave better in those situations and we have to see how this feels for low rated players because I think even for a low rated player with not as high positioning he should behave and position much better than in FIFA 20 because in FIFA 20 positioning and attacking eye was a nightmare and in the beta I only played with high rated teams, so for example Liverpool, PSG, Bayern München, Real Madrid and so on. So I can't really tell already how this feels for low rated players and attackers. So far we talked about the attacking AI and this means how the players, how the teammates behave on their own. Now we come to creative runs and these are new features how you can have an influence on the runs of your teammates on purpose. There are three new features, directed pass and go, directed runs and player lock and we are going to start with the first two. And I think how they work and how you can use them is well described in the Pitch Notes article and therefore I will primarily talk about how it is to use those features. And I have to say in the beginning it's very unusual because so far you don't use the right stick in these kind of situations. So after pressing the passing button or using L1 and R1 that you then flick the right stick. So this is a new motoric aspect that you have to learn, that you have to acquire the muscle memory for. And this is one layer to, to learn this technique and the second layer is to understand in what kind of situations it's actually useful. Because in most of the situations there is no need to go for a directed run. And therefore you have to find the right balance. When to use this feature and this is also something that we will definitely cover in some tutorial videos. So after we figured it out we're going to share the knowledge about this technique which I think is quite promising when you find the right balance and we're going to share this on this channel as well. And then we come to the third feature of creative runs, player lock. And I think in the beginning this feature sounds very powerful because you can control a player off the ball. And this approach is very unique. Just think about it. You can control one player off the ball, you move him in the open space in the most dangerous positions and you think wow, you can't be stopped. But there are some limitations to it. So first of all, you control only one player off the ball and the CPU is controlling the guy who has the ball. And in FIFA, if you want to play a pass, it's not only necessary that the guy who is receiving the pass is open and maybe in a very good position, but also that the guy who is controlling the ball has a good passing angle and you can't control it. So imagine you're in a very good position, but the guy who has the ball is facing away from you. You can't benefit from those situations. Also your opponent is going to see when you use the player lock feature. So you can use a defender to especially mark the player that you are controlling 
or he could also apply some extra pressure on the guy who's controlling the ball because he knows that this player is CPU controlled. So there are some limitations to this feature and therefore I don't think it's going to be as useful, but you never know. There might be some certain situations where it's super strong, but we have to find this out. Next, we want to talk about finishing and I don't think there are any new features about it, but I know this is a very important topic and therefore I want to share my impressions of the beta of FIFA 21. And near post finishing was very, very strong in FIFA 20 and obviously way too effective. And my impression of the beta is it's not as strong anymore because the goalkeeper usually is much smarter in his positioning in covering the near post. But on the other end, I have to say, I heard some other feedback from other guys who played the beta and they had the opinion that the near post finishes are still too strong. But this is something which I think is down to fine tuning. So there's plenty of time and this is something easy to fix. I would say so. And I hope, I have the hopes that this will be in FIFA 21 the case that near post finishes are much more balanced. I also want to briefly talk about cross body shooting. So this means when you shoot across your body most of the time into the far post. And from my perspective, it felt a little bit improved because if near post is not as strong anymore, you have to find other ways to finish your situations and cross body shooting could be a way. As I said, it felt a little bit improved, but from my opinion, it should be still more effective than it is at the moment. Crossing and heading is also something that we should talk about because crossing is reworked in FIFA 21. First of all, there are some new crossing variations which you can get by certain button combinations. I can't explain all of them in this video, it would be quite confusing. So check out the Pitch Notes article, they should be described in there. And second of all, the assistance for crosses is changed in FIFA 21. So in FIFA 20 and before, the default and also recommended setting for the crossing assistance was semi and now in FIFA 21 this is more like assisted. This is also now the default one and before the first game I changed the setting to semi because I thought, well, this was like the normal one in FIFA 20, why is it changed now to assisted? So I changed to semi and my first crosses in FIFA 21 with the semi assistance was, were horrible because they ended up in the stands because now with the semi setting in FIFA 21 you have to aim more carefully but to my knowledge it could be worth learning the crosses with the semi setting because it gives you more freedom for the crosses and therefore you would be able to play better crosses. So I think this could be a cool way to balance it. Then we also have a new setting for headers which is assisted or manual and everything that you play in Ultimate Team to my knowledge is on manual and this can be a drastic change. I personally played with assisted in the beta because I didn't know that, that the default now for Ultimate Team for example is going to be manual. And what I also heard is that when you play on assisted, it's easier to aim, but then the headers will have a higher error. Because when I played in the beta, I had some very good situations with the headers. For example, on normal crosses, I was able to convert quite easily. But after corners, I sometimes was very free, had an open and very good header, also with a green time finish, but then still not able to convert on those headers because of the error of the assistance. So playing with the assisted headers has a higher error and when you play on manual this is more rewarding because then you have less error. Now we come to dribbling and quite frankly I don't have to say much about this topic because yes there is a new dribbling technique which is called agile dribbling and when I saw first examples of real life football and then also examples in FIFA I thought whoa this is super OP but then when I used it in game for me it felt quite similar to strafe dribbling and on the other hand, I was playing against AI. I have mentioned it so far, but in the beta I was only playing against AI, not other human opponents. And I think for a dribbling technique, for a new one, I have to try it out against other human opponents because they actually try to get to the ball. I can maybe outplay them with a dribbling technique. Whereas when I play against the AI, they are more setback, wait, patient, don't make as many errors or don't really commit to get to the ball. And we will see how this is going to turn out with the agile dribbling. And with the left stick dribbling in general, I didn't notice as many differences to FIFA 20. I think one thing is quite important. There's a new setting now with the agile dribbling. There's also contextual agile dribbling, which you can turn on and off. And this means when you have the setting on that in certain situations, your player might recognize that now could be a good spot for the agile dribbling and take some touches with the agile dribbling. 
And yes, this could be beneficial, but you lose control over the way how you dribble with your player. And therefore I heard it's also recommended to turn it off to have full control over the dribbling of your player. I haven't tried it out with the contextual dribbling off, but I will definitely do this when I have the next chance to play FIFA 21. Close to the end of this video, I have another very controversial topic, it is defending. Because in FIFA 20, the meta was very defensive, very drop back heavy. And now the question is, how's this going to be in FIFA 21? Will be defending also as easy or do we can break through defensive lines more easily and create more chances? And unfortunately, I can't give you really an answer to this question right now, because as I mentioned previously in the beta of FIFA 21, I only played against AI and the AI didn't play as much dropback and therefore I don't have any experiences how you can break through a defensive line, how you can play against someone who's playing dropback. But I will definitely have an eye on this topic when I have further chances to play FIFA 21 and also have the chance to play against other humans in FIFA 21 because I know this was one of the biggest pain points of FIFA 20 which was taking the fun away. There's one last thing that I would like to add to defending and it's about auto tackles. And this means when you're close by with a defender to the opponent who has the ball, there's a range at which your player automatically does a tackle. And from my perception, this range is reduced and this means that you have to press the tackle button more actively to then actually challenge the ball. And I think this is a very good change because now it requires a little bit more skill to go for the active tackle to get to the ball. The last topic that I want to talk about is settings. And yes, I know this doesn't sound very exciting, but I definitely want to talk about it because in the last FIFA you might have noticed there were more settings how you can tune the game for your preferences. And this trend is going to continue in FIFA 21. There are more settings, so for example, auto clearances, auto shots, auto flare passes, contextual agile dribbling and also assisted headers. You can turn this on and off and then tune the game more how you would like to play it because maybe you get annoyed by the fact when your defender automatically clears a ball inside the box even though you would have might controlled it. And yes, this makes it a little bit more complicated because you might don't know how this is going to affect your gameplay experiences, but we will also help you with that, give you some guidance on what we think would be the optimal settings but I can already tell you it comes down to your personal preferences and I think this is very nice that you can change now these small little details how you want to play the game. So these were my first impressions about the gameplay changes in FIFA 21 and as I mentioned in the beginning I didn't talk about every single topic or every single change in detail because I might not have been able to test it out in detail. So I highly recommend to read the full rundown of the changes in the Pitch Notes article. The link is in the video description. And also you have to be quite cautious because this is work in progress. I only played the beta and it's going to change in the next couple of weeks. But we are looking forward to keep you updated on this. And if you're interested in FIFA 21 and especially if you're interested in raising your edge in getting better at the game and you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, activate the notifications to not miss any of the upcoming videos, whether it is more news and announcements or our first tutorial video. So stay tuned and if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps us a lot. And now I'm going to head out. As always, keep a clean sheet. I'm out.